Born between 1965 and 1979, Generation X are often referred to as the forgotten generation. The middle child sitting between the two larger generations, Millennials and Boomers. They grew up in a time of drastic changes in society, politics, and technology. They range in age between 38 and 52, and there are 1.4 billion of them. Gen X boasts more spending power globally than any other generation, with 125 billion in spending power in the U.S. alone. In their youth, they were thought of as cynical, careless, and skeptical. However, there's more to Generation X than we were led to believe. Everything changed drastically during the period of time that we were growing up. You've just got to be able to adapt to everything that's put in front of you and make, make the best of it. I remember my first jobs in the 80s where you got a gig and you're like, okay, I need to make the absolute most of this. Could go away at any time. The 90s was an amazing era of, of opportunity and possibility. Stock market was kind of booming, the Berlin Wall was coming down, it was, you know, the Cold Wars ended. Everything was great. I knew I wanted to do something that I enjoyed because I hated school. 18 years of hating something gives you a very clear mindset that you have to do something you're going to love because if you're not going to love it, you're not going to be happy doing it. I think when you're 18 or 19 years old, it's hard to really know what you want to do with your life and you have to make a decision. I had a career goal. I was going to be a mortician. I didn't have any specific career goal in mind um, when I started university. I made a calculated decision to do what my passion was, which was film. Uh, journalism, and I was, that was going to be my thing, and then things just evolved and I ended up with a different degree. So. Nobody was really good at telling me what to do, so I just figured out what the right thing to do was, and ultimately, got to, in some ways, define my job. Their expectations of what a job is is a bit different of what mine were. They kind of think, you know, I've done this, I've gotten this degree, I should have this job. When I came out, it was more, okay, I've done this, I'll start off doing whatever you want, and I'll prove myself to get to this other level. Everything is a little bit more relaxed, so I would, I would definitely say that I've seen the relaxed nature of, of even managing people. You feel part of a team rather than someone telling you, go and take that thing and move it over there. Less task driven, specific task driven, and more of a goal driven. You know the work that you need to, to get done, so it's no longer you need to do this, you just, you know. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. I read the news at night, and by news I mean Twitter. <laughs> I use Twitter, I use Instagram, Facebook. I get a lot of my news on Twitter. Twitter I use very much as a sort of one-way thing. I don't really post at all on Twitter. Facebook a little bit. Um, tweet once in a great while, but it's mainly uh, Facebook. Facebook, which I find just quite useful for keeping up with my friends back in the UK. I don't know if Pinterest is a social, considered a social. Sì, è un social di immagini, diciamo, uso tanto Pinterest. Snapchat, I had to some, have somebody educate me on how, what, what and how it is. I got Snapchat, but I really don't get it. I guess I do have favorite brands. I mean, I, I think I'm quite brand loyal. I do, like, I definitely gravitate towards the ones that I like and trust. I just tend to stick with stuff that I trust. Um, I know what works for us and for my family. Like, I... I run, so I trust Brooks running, or I trust Mizuno, because those are the brands that have worked for me. I'm a big Adidas guy. Apple. Marvel, if that's really a brand. J. Crew. I like The Gap. Nike. New Balance. I mean, I was such a big Nintendo fan that I had the, the glove. I was huge on Nike um, growing up. I really like Nike still. I don't have any problems with it, but I'm, I will also do Adidas or Puma. Sort of media brands, probably. Guardian. The Science Museum, the VNA brands or organizations with a with a purpose. Interessante, mi piace molto. Mi piace molto se l'esperienza esce dal com dal commerciale. I'm more interested in their in their culture and how they generate innovation. And so those are the brands I'll look up to. Tesla is a brand that I look up to because out of nowhere they've managed to design a culture and disrupt. I'm saving for college. I have a 16-year-old son. We're saving for retirement. Retire comfortably, retire not when I'm 80. Financially, I'm scared. I 
I want to keep my job because <laughs> I have a lot of things to pay for. So financial security is always at the back of the mind. Saving for my daughter's college fund, even though she's only nine years old, I'm still putting money aside for that and thinking about the future as well. So not just blowing all my money like maybe I would have done 10 or 15 years ago. I, I'd like to think that my generation and certainly millennials listen to their kids, listen to the younger generation more and more receptive. Um, I, I'd like to think that, uh, but we're, we have to find out, yeah. Generation X are pragmatic, sensible and adaptable, and they have substantial spending power. Attract them by giving them real value, whether that be entertainment, advice or information. Allow them to explore at their own pace and on their own terms. Build experiences that include the whole family. Boomers and millennials often go where Gen X lead. Answer their questions. They don't accept things on face value. And remember, they're adept in both analog and digital. It's time to rethink this dynamic generation.